glossary. Importance. The energy of importance becomes present when disproportionate meaning is ascribed to something. Importance is pure excess potential and is eliminated by balanced forces, creating problems for the person generating the potential. And there are two kinds of importance, inner and outer. Inner or personal importance manifests when a person overestimates their own virtues or shortcomings. The form of expression for inner importance sounds, I am an important person, or I do important work. When the arrow on the importance measure goes off the scales, balanced forces come in and take things into their own hands. The hot shot then receives a good slap. Once balanced forces come into play, disappointment also awaits the person whose work is so phenomenally important. Either there will turn out to be no demand for their work, or the quality of the work will be shoddy. On the other side of the coin is when a person self-deprecatingly downplays their own virtues, playing smaller than they really are. In both cases, the magnitude of excess potential produced is the same. The difference is only in the polarity expressed. Outer importance is also artificially created when a person attributes excessive meaning to an object or event in the outside world. The form of expression for outer importance might sound such and such is extremely important to me or it is extremely important to me to do such and such. This generates excess potential which ruins everything. Imagine having to walk along a log lying on the ground. Nothing could be simpler. But what if you had to walk along the same log placed across the roofs of two high-rise buildings? The short stroll would become extremely important to you, and there would be nothing you could do to convince yourself otherwise. Wave of Fortune the wave of fortune is created by a cluster of lifelines that are particularly favorable to a specific individual. There is nothing the alternative space does not contain, including such golden veins. If you arrive at an outer line of this form of irregularity and experience some form of good luck, you can slide onto other lines within the same cluster by inertia and, consequently, other fortuitous circumstances will follow on from the first. However, if you experience a bit of a bad patch after the first stroke of luck, it means that a destructive pendulum has latched onto you and led you away from the wave of good fortune. Choice Transurfing proposes a fundamentally different approach to achieving one's goals. According to this approach, a person makes an order as they would in a restaurant without any consideration for the means of achieving the goal. As a result, the goal is realized to a large part of its own accord, independently of the direct actions of the customer. Desires are not fulfilled. Dreams do not come true. Yet, your choice is an immutable law and will inevitably be realized. It would be impossible to explain the essence of choice in just a couple of words. Transurfing is basically all about what choice is and how to actually make choices. Unity of Heart and Mind Will is inherent to the mind and yet, despite this fact, the mind cannot control outer intention. The heart, on the other hand, is capable of identifying with outer intention, and yet it is not endowed with the power of the will. The heart flies around the alternative space like an uncontrolled kite. In order to bring outer intention in line with your will, you have to achieve unity of heart and mind. 
In this state, the feelings of the heart and the thoughts of the mind are as one. For example, when a person is filled with joyful inspiration, the heart sings and the mind rubs its hands in glee. In this state, a person is capable of being highly creative. It can also be the case that the heart and mind find agreement in emotions such as anxiety, fear, and non-acceptance. This is when our worst expectations are realized. Finally, when common sense insists on one thing and the heart resists, there is discord between the heart and mind. Guardian's Riddle Everyone can have the freedom to choose whatever they want. How can such freedom be obtained? People do not realize that they do not have to struggle for what they want and can simply have it. It sounds very unlikely, but nonetheless, it is true. The key to the riddle can be found by reading Transurfing Reality in its entirety. You will not understand the solution to the riddle fully if you peek at the last chapter without reading. Signs Guiding signs are signs that indicate a forthcoming turn in the alternative's flow. If something is approaching that could have a substantial impact on the future course of events, then a sign appears to signal it. When the alternative's flow takes a new turn, a person shifts onto a different lifeline. Each line is more or less uniform in quality. The stream of the alternative's flow can transect various lines which differ from one another in the parameters of their conditions. Change may be fairly insignificant, but the difference can be felt nonetheless. This type of qualitative change is experienced either consciously or subconsciously as a sense that something is not quite right. Guiding signs only appear at the onset of a shift to new lifelines. Not all individual phenomena catch our attention. For example, a crow caws. If you do not notice any qualitative difference in this event, it means that you are still on the former lifeline. If, however, there is something about it that alerts you for some reason, then it should be taken to represent a sign. A sign can be distinguished from more ordinary phenomena in that it signals the start of a transition to a very new type of lifeline. Excess Potential Excess potential represents tension, a localized disturbance in an otherwise stable energy field. The irregularity is created by thought energy when an object is attributed excessive and disproportionate meaning. Desire represents an example of excess potential because it strives to draw the object of attraction to a place where it is not naturally present. The desperate desire to have something you lack creates an energetic differential in pressure which drums up the winds of balanced forces. Other examples of excess potential include dissatisfaction, blame, admiration, worship, idealization, over-evaluation, contempt, vanity, and likewise feelings of superiority, inferiority, and guilt. Induced Shift Catastrophes, natural disasters, armed conflicts, and economic crises all develop in spiral fashion. First, there is the germ of the event, then its development. Tension rises until things reach a culmination, with emotions spilling all over the place. Finally, the accumulated energy is released into the atmosphere before a temporary ensuing calm. A whirlpool functions in relatively the same manner. A pendulum catches the attention of a whole group of people in its noose 
and begins to sway with increasing force, drawing people after it onto calamitous lifelines. The individual responds to the pendulum's first push by, for example, reacting to the negative event, taking part in the confusion, and thereby entering the spiral's impact zone, which turns and pulls like a vortex. The phenomenon of the pull into the vortex is defined as an induced transition onto a lifeline in which the individual takes on the role of victim. The individual's response to the pendulum's push and the consequent mutual exchange of energy induces a transition into a lifeline similar in frequency to the oscillations of the pendulum. As a result, the negative event becomes a part of the layer of that individual's world. Coordination of Importance Do not attribute excessive meaning to anything. Your importance energy is beneficial to the pendulum, but not to you. Pendulums control people like puppets with the strings of importance. People are afraid to let go of the strings of importance because they are under the power of dependence, which creates an illusion of support and confidence. Confidence represents the same kind of excess potential as insecurity. It is just the opposite polarity. Awareness and intention equip you to stay out of the pendulum's game and get what you want without having to battle for it. When you are free from the battle, you do not need confidence. If I am free from importance, I have nothing to defend and nothing to conquer. I just go ahead and calmly make my choices. To become free of pendulums, you have to abandon inner and outer intention. Problems and obstacles appear on the path towards the goal because of the excess potential of importance. Obstacles are built on the foundation of importance. If importance is reduced, the obstacles will crumble and cease to be a problem. Coordination of Intention The fact that people who have a tendency towards negativity see their worst expectations realized proves that people are capable of influencing the course of events in their life. Every event on a specific lifeline has two branches extending from it. One favorable, the other unfavorable. Every time you encounter an event, you make a choice about your relationship to it. If you choose to see an event as positive, you find yourself on the favorable branch of the lifeline. However, a tendency for negativity makes you express dissatisfaction and choose the unfavorable branch. As soon as something disappoints you, something else equally as disappointing follows soon after. This is why we say that misfortune never comes alone. However, the chain of misfortunate events does not follow on from the first event, but from your relationship to it. The pattern is created by the choice you make when you stand at the fork in the lifeline. If you analyze how inclined you are to think negatively, you will have a good idea of where a series of negative branches on the lifeline has led through over the course of your life. The principle of the coordination of intention can be expressed in the following manner. If you decide to perceive seemingly negative changes in the scenario as positive, then that is how things will be. By following this principle, you can achieve the same success in the positive as the negativists achieve in realizing their worst expectations. Lifeline A person's life, just like any other example of matter in motion, represents a chain of cause and effect. In the alternative space, effect is always located close to the cause. 
just as one effect follows another, sectors that are in close proximity in the alternative space are organized into lifelines. The scripts and sets of scenery on one lifeline are more or less uniform in quality. A person's life unfolds fairly stably along a given lifeline until an event occurs that substantially changes the script and scenery. At that point, fate takes a turn and shifts into a different lifeline. You are always on a lifeline that corresponds in its parameters to your thought energy. By adjusting your relationship to the world, i.e. your mental image, you shift onto a different lifeline in which potential events can unfold in different ways. Material Realization Under certain conditions, the information structure of the alternative space can materialize. Any thought, like any sector in the field, has certain parameters. When thought energy is transmitted, it illuminates the corresponding sector of the field and realizes that specific alternatives of possible physical realities. Therefore, thoughts have a direct impact on the course of events. The alternative space serves as a template. It determines the form and trajectory of the movement dynamics of matter. The potential for material realization moves in time and space, whilst the alternatives themselves remain in a specific space for eternity. Every living being creates the layer of their individual world via the transmission of thought energy. Numerous living organisms inhabit our world, and every single one of them contributes to the shaping of reality. Pendulum Thought energy is material and does not totally disappear without trace. When a group of people begin to think in a similar way, their thought waves accumulate in layers and invisible but real energy information structures. Pendulums are created in the greater ocean of energy. The structures begin to evolve independently until they reach a stage at which they are able to subject people to their own laws. When a person comes under the influence of a destructive pendulum, they lose their freedom and are forced to become a small cog in a large machine. The more people, adherents, feed the pendulum with their energy, the more forceful its sway. Every pendulum has its characteristic oscillation frequency. For example, a swing will gain height only if you apply effort to pushing it with a certain frequency. This is what is meant by the resonant frequency. If the number of a pendulum's adherence decreases, its sway becomes weaker. If the number of adherence declines to zero, the pendulum dies and ceases to exist as a separate entity. In order to pump energy from people, a pendulum hooks into their emotions and reactions. Indignation, dissatisfaction, hate, irritation, anxiety, worry, depression, confusion, despair, fear, pity, attachment, admiration, tenderness, idealization, adulation, delight, disappointment, pride, arrogance, contempt, aversion, insult, duty, guilt, etc. The greatest threat of the pendulum's suppressive influence is that it leads its victims away from lifelines in which that person would have been truly happy. It is essential to free oneself from imposed goals after which one battles, straying even further from one's own true path in life. In essence, the pendulum is an egregore, and yet it is much more than this. 
the notion of the egregore does not reflect the entire range of subtle interaction between the individual and the energy information structures referred to here as pendulums. Intention Intention can be roughly defined as the resolve to have and act. Intention is realized. Desire is not. You may desire to put your hand up. The desire is shaped in your thoughts and you become aware that you wish to put your hand up. Is it the desire that actually raises the arm in the end? No. Of itself, desire does not generate any physical action. The arm is only finally raised when the thought has been processed, leaving just the resolve to take action. So, it is the resolve to act that lifts the arm? Once again, no. You may have decided that you will lift up your arm, but it will not yet be moved. So, what exactly is it then that causes you to put up your hand? How do you define what lies beyond resolve? Here, the mind is powerless to provide an intelligible explanation for what intention really is. Our definition of intention as the resolve to have and act demonstrates the prelude to the force that actually manifests the action. All we can do is state the fact that the arm is lifted neither by desire nor by decision, but by something we are referring to as intention. Intention is divided into two kinds, inner and outer. Inner intention presupposes active impact on the world around us. This is the resolve to act. Outer intention is the resolve to have, which causes the world to fulfill the individual's will. Inner intention is the concentration of one's attention on the process of moving towards one's goal. Outer intention is the concentration of attention on the process of how the goal realizes itself. Inner intention causes the goal to be achieved whereas outer intention allows it to be chosen. Everything that is associated with magic and paranormal phenomena relates to the areas of outer intention. Everything that can be reached within the context of the ordinary worldview is achieved by the power of inner intention. Dependent Relationships Dependent relationships are defined by a statement of conditions such as If you do this, then I will do this. If you love me, you would drop everything and come to the edge of the world with me. If you do not want to marry me, you obviously do not love me. If you praise me, I will be friends with you. If you do not give me your spade, I will drive you out of the sand pit. When love is transformed into a dependent relationship, polarization occurs and balance is destroyed. Unconditional love is love with the right to possess and admiration without adulation. In other words, this feeling does not create dependent relationships between the one who loves and the object of their love. Balance is destroyed when one thing is compared or juxtaposed to another. We are like this and they are different. For example, national pride. In comparison to which nations? A feeling of inferiority or pride in oneself. In comparison to whom? Where there is contradistinction, balanced forces will inevitably get involved. The action of balanced forces is either aimed at dragging the subjects of contradiction apart or at bringing them together in mutual agreement or in collision. If you are the one who created the polarization, then, in the majority of cases, the impact of balanced forces 
will work against you. Polarization Excess potential arises when certain qualities are attributed excess meaning. Dependent relationships are formed between people when they begin to compare themselves and place conditions upon each other such as If you do this, then I will do this. Of itself, excess potential is not necessarily a problem while the distorted evaluation exists irrelatively on its own. However, the moment that the artificially inflated evaluation of one object is placed into a relative relationship with another object, polarization occurs, which calls forth the wind of balanced forces. Balanced forces strive to eliminate polarization, and their action is usually aimed against the person responsible for creating the polarization in the first place. Alternatives Space The alternative space represents an information structure. It is an infinite information field containing all the alternatives of all possible events. You could say that the alternative space contains everything that ever was and everything that ever will be. The alternative space serves as a template and coordinates grid for the movement of matter through space and time. Both the future and the past are held in a constant position as if on a roll of film. The effect of time is only created as a result of the movement of a single frame in which the present is lit up. The world simultaneously exists in two forms physical reality that can be touched, and the metaphysical alternative space which lies beyond the realms of perception and yet whose existence is no less objective. In principle, the information field can be accessed. Intuitive knowledge and clairvoyance are sourced in the alternative's space. The mind is not capable of creating anything fundamentally new. It can only create a new version of a house from old bricks. The mind does not store information so much as a kind of address to the information which is contained in the alternative's space. All scientific discoveries and masterpieces are sourced by the mind from the alternative space via the heart. Dreams are not illusions in the normal sense of the word. The mind does not imagine its dreams. It genuinely sees them. Everything we see in physical reality represents a realized alternative. In dreams, we are capable of seeing things that have not been realized, that is, plays with virtual scenarios and sets of scenery. Dreams show us what could have taken place in the past and what could potentially take place in the future. Dreaming is the journeying of the soul through the alternative's space. Balanced Forces Wherever excess potential is present, balanced forces appear aimed to eliminate it. Potential is created by human thought energy when excess meaning is ascribed to a particular object. Compare these two situations. You are standing on the floor in your house, or you are standing at the edge of a precipice. In the first case, there is nothing to worry about. In the second, the situation has great meaning. If you make one careless movement, the situation would be fatal. On an energetic level, that fact of standing has the same meaning in the first situation, in the second. But when you are standing above a precipice, your fear pumps up the tension, creating an irregularity in the energy field. Balanced forces arise as a result, aimed at eliminating the heterogeneity. You can actually feel their impact. 
On the one hand, an inexplicable force pulls you downwards, and, on the other hand, it draws you to take a step backwards away from the edge. In order to eliminate the excess potential of your fear, the balanced forces will either have to drag you away from the edge, or throw you downwards and be done with it. It is their influence that you sense. The action of balanced forces in eliminating excess potential generates the majority of the problems people face. The intrigue is that a person often gets a result directly opposite to what they originally intended. At the same time, there is no clear reason why this should be. This is what makes us feel that some inexplicable dark force is at play, similar to Sod's Law. Sector of the Alternative Space A specific alternative of any given event exists at every point of the alternative's space. For the sake of clarity, we will assume that the alternative consists of scripts and scenery. Scenery represents the external view of form of a phenomenon, whereas the script is the path along which matter moves. For convenience sake, the alternative's space can be divided into sectors, every sector endowed with scripts and scenery. The greater the distance between sectors, the greater the difference in scripts and scenery. Each person's fate is also represented by a multitude of alternatives. Theoretically, there are no limits to the number of possible turns of fate in a person's life, because the alternative's space is infinite. Slide Our perceptions of ourselves and our environment are often far from the truth. The distortion is caused by slides. For example, you are worried about certain personal shortcomings that cause you to experience a feeling of inferiority because you think that others dislike and disapprove of them too. When you are interacting with people, you insert an inferiority complex slide into your projector, which causes you to see things in a distorted light. The slide is a distorted picture of reality that exists in your mind. As a rule, a negative slide is generated by unity of heart and mind, which is why it is manifested into physical reality. Our worst expectations tend to come true. Negative slides can be transformed into positive slides and forced to work for you. If you intentionally create a positive slide, it is capable of miraculously transforming the layer of your world. A target slide is a mental picture of the goal as if it had already been reached. The systematic visualization of the slide leads to the materialization of the corresponding sector in the alternative's space. World Layer Every living being materializes a given sector of the alternative space with their thought energy and, thereby, creates the layer of their world. All these layers lie one on top of the other and, in this way, every living being contributes to the shaping of reality. The individual creates the layer of their personal world, their separate reality, with their mental outlook. This reality acquires a certain hue depending on that person's attitudes. Metaphorically speaking, certain weather conditions are set. Morning freshness in the sunshine or cloudy and raining. Sometimes a hurricane whips wildly or there might even be a natural catastrophe. Individual reality is created by two means, physical and metaphysical. In other words, a person builds their world with their thoughts and actions. Here, 
thought forms play the leading role because they are responsible for creating a significant portion of the material problems that a person has to battle with for a lot of the time. Transurfing deals exclusively with the metaphysical aspect. Alternatives flow. In the alternative space, information is static, like in a matrix. The information structure is organized in interconnected chains. The alternatives flow is generated by causal relationships. The restless mind constantly experiences the tremors of pendulums and decides to solve all its problems in an attempt to keep the situation under control. In the majority of cases, the mind's willful decisions are no more useful than pointlessly slapping your hands about in the water. Most problems, particularly minor ones, resolve themselves if you do not hinder the alternative's flow. The main reason one should not actively resist the flow is because doing so a huge amount of energy is wasted, either in vain or to one's detriment. The flow takes the path of least resistance, and so it contains the most rational and efficient solution to a problem. Resisting the flow, on the contrary, generates a mass of new problems. A powerful intellect is of no purpose if the solution already exists in the alternative's space. If you do not get involved in the refinements and let the alternative's flow take its course, the solution, and what is more, an optimal solution, will present itself. Optimality is an inherent part of the structure of the information field. The alternative space contains everything but it is most likely that the least energy-consuming alternative is the one that will ultimately be materialized. Nature never wastes energy. Transurfing I did not invent the word transurfing. It just came to me from out of nowhere, just like all the other terms and content of this book. It was a while until I came to understand its meaning. It is not even entirely clear how to explain the associations linked with it. The meaning of transurfing can be interpreted as gliding through the alternative space or transforming potential alternatives into reality or shifting across lifelines. Generally speaking, though, if you practice transurfing, you are balancing on a wave of fortune. The word is pronounced transurfing in the same way as it is spelled. If the listener prefers to pronounce it in the English manner, be my guest. But bear in mind that the sound yo does not exist in the English language. Frailing Frailing is an effective technique that can be applied to interpersonal relationships, and it represents an integral part of transurfing. The most important principle of frailing can be expressed in the following manner. Abandon the intention to get and replace it with the intention to give, and you will receive the very thing you let go of. The action of this principle is based on the fact that your inner intention uses the inner intention of your partner without compromising their interests. As a result, you receive from that person the very thing you were unsuccessful in achieving by the ordinary methods of inner intention. If you follow this principle, you will achieve impressive results in personal and professional forms of communication. Goals and Doors Everyone has their own true path in life that will bring them true happiness. Pendulums impose false goals on people that tempt them with the prospects of prestige and their seeming inaccessibility. 
By chasing after false goals, you will either achieve nothing, or you will achieve the goal, only to discover that you did not really want it after all. Your goal will transform your life into a celebration. The process of achieving your innermost goal will bring about the fulfillment of all your other wishes and the results will exceed all expectation. A person's door represents the particular path that will lead them to their innermost goal. If you head towards your own goal through your own door, no one and nothing can stop you because the key of your soul fits the lock to your path. No one can take from you what is truly yours. There should not be any problem, therefore, in achieving your innermost goal. The only potential problem lies in finding your goal and your door. Transurfing will give you the tools to do this. Reality Transurfing by Vadim Zeland <laughs>